Right, thank you. So first, I have a few, scene, a few slides just to um, set the scene as to what we are and what we do. And as you can see, we're a national sort of full service property consultants covering all the different, different property sectors. A few statistics, just to give you a feel for the scope and size of the firm. And then into the detail as to what we are in Oxford. We've got sort of 90 staff, and you can see their range of the disciplines that the various individuals work across through architecture, right down A to V, not quite A to Z, but A to B in uh, terms of valuation. So, as we see it, there are two key factors to recruitment and retention of our staff in our business, and brand is absolutely one of those. And that's what we see as what we are in terms of our brand values, which we want our staff to, to buy into and feel a part of, which is obviously approachable, effective, ambitious being the headlines, but obviously the detail there that, that you can see. And they are, that is the key to recruiting new blood to see it, is the young are brand conscious in employment terms. They care about who they work for, they care about what their employer says, and in terms of when they're looking to move on to their next role, they want their CV to show to really sort of be an ambassador for what it is they've done and what they can go on to do. So a few of my colleagues. The second one, alongside brand as we see it, is career path, and, and that's me up there. I started as a graduate 25 years ago. You might be thinking, gosh, he doesn't look it. Possibly not grey and old, but we've got over a quarter who've been with us for over five years. I'll let you guess which one the CEO is, but picking up on what po other points that people have said, recognition and reward underpins the other elements that we've been talking about, and that's really what, in terms of keeping staff and retaining staff, we have an annual reception in London where we do sort of look to recognise and reward those who hit their long service milestones. Clients, have they changed or how have they changed? Well, yes they have and it's led to growth in our business. Sort of competition is intense for clients and the work they offer and you have to lead the pack or you'll be subsumed by the others. And for us, We've grown our staff by 50% in the last five years, and that's by going into new areas, new teams, being less clubby, which is how I think many property consultancies were perceived years ago, and sort of being more diverse and more dynamic. And that includes, for us, one of our new teams is a mapping and grand survey team, led by a gentleman in the middle who was head of mapping at Basra for the armed forces, and graduates from a whole range of universities that perhaps we'd never have considered 10 years ago doing, again, degree courses that you know, just wouldn't have been on our radar. However, we do have head of Tweed and our <laughs> land agents, which is probably what we were perceived, that's what we were perceived as being sort of 10 years ago, and we still do have, what is that, seven out of the 90 would sort of still sit within that, that department. And of course, there are the new graduates, and I'll talk about those in detail in a minute. But of course, there are plenty of challenges. And that's the challenges that we see in terms of sort of recruiting and retaining staff diversity and skills, as I'll talk about more directly in a few slides later on. Technology, working practices have been covered in other areas. Um, but sort of clients do require sort of 24/7 service. Generation Y, they're naturally, you know, they have much more higher IT expectations than perhaps we did or we do. So our IT department is constantly having to invest and reinvent our hardware and sort of technology to allow everything that Patsy was referring to: hot desking, flexi hours, working from home, working on the move, all those sorts of things. Speculative recruitment, I would sort of urge everybody to keep an eye on LinkedIn, trawl through LinkedIn, see what people are doing, where they are, and always allow time for a coffee and a chat with individuals. You'll never know what you might learn or who you might come across and what value that can give to your business in time to come. 
and sort of lastly, the last couple there, proximity of London, cost of living, I think that's where we suffer hugely in terms of we are commutable to London, and in London you will get London salaries, which can't always be paid for here, so it's a sort of a double whammy in that, in that regard. You've got the house <coughs> price, but not the salaries. So, meeting the challenges. The property industry has had to and needs to take sort of huge steps to change the face of its business, and these are the various things that we've signed up to in our business in terms of investors and people, our ICS inclusive employer, and then through the property week, which is our sort of trade journal, their sort of inclusive and sort of open plan um, sort of work process. Diversity, I referred to. Those are some of the elements that, again, we as a firm have signed up to and committed to in the various training that the partners and staff have to go through. And in terms of just widening that great um, base for graduates and because other universities is looking to offer paid for internships around the country, not just to my godson or my friend's son, but you know, going out there to offer paid internships to allow everybody to come and experience what we, we can offer. Recruitment. Planning at the moment, if you look online, you'll see there are 13 jobs in our in the sort of planning sector available in Oxford, and that's what we're all having to compete to to try and recruit one person. Graduate recruitment, getting everything else right, all the different elements that I've referred to, that feeds directly into the success you have in terms of graduate recruitment. So you have to do all of that, you have to go out onto the Milk Brands, road shows, we have interview and testing centres in our head office in London, and the reason why you have to do everything else to get it right to get the recruitment is that you want the best graduates that you're making offers to to accept the offer that you're making and not sales. Um, but uh, the best of absolutely. So we have a graduate website um, which sort of gears, which sort of outlines everything that we offer. CEO I referred to earlier, he had exactly the same career path as me, started as a graduate, and now is our CEO. For our graduates, we have a two-year training program, which involves um, each year there are two two-day away days training exercise where we have various sessions and exercises they go on, and that's the sort of the rural team going around to North Oxfordshire Estate uh, recently. So, moving on, staff retention. And I think as it's been alluded to, it's not all about money. What we all really want, and it goes to all, all of us at the root of what we're all about as human beings, we actually want somebody to be nice to us and to say thank you and to recognize what we're doing. And the other points, health and well-being, office location, they're all hugely relevant in Oxford in terms of you know, attracting the best allowing them to work in our office if they can't necessarily afford to live in Oxford, but be able to live outside in the other locations and to commute in and out at the right time or to work from home at different times of the week. And you have to provide an environment that people are proud of, proud to work in and proud to want to be in. And that's what sort of we certainly want to do in the new offices that we're opening and, and revamping. Client retention and staff retention. I think probably Sir Richard Branson was right to a degree. Um, maybe probably is right. Um, the two are linked, though, and we are a people business in terms of what we do. We want to be sort of trusted advisor to our clients, and it is all about those long-term relationships in terms of having staff that build those relationships and can go on and then cross-sell within those relationships to our other sort of business areas from our existing client base. And the last point there, dynamic, sporting, and social teams, it's about us as employers you know, adding value to the work environment for our employees, which is about facilitating and funding social interaction so that it is a social place to work with outside of work. That's a recent Railthon where a couple of our teams were sort of raising funds for some uh, North Oxford charities. So what's the forecast? We all aspire to paragraphs one and two, but if we don't deliver on paragraph three, we won't deliver on paragraphs one and two. And I think, I think what we've all learnt as we've seen our business evolve ever more rapidly is sort of remembering that actually what we do 
today will not be enough tomorrow. We've all got to sort of to continue to evolve and improving our working practices and working processes. So the challenge isn't going to go away. It's going to get more and more intense, which is where I think certainly we would see from our colleagues in Cambridge that partnership that you refer to is you know, much stronger and much more developed in sort of depth and breadth in Cambridge. And that's where I think we in Oxford have got, you know, can learn from that to sort of help make the improvements that we're all, all talking about. So thank you.